Hi, everyone, and welcome to Studio Jake. I, of course, am your host, Jacob Airy. Thank you so much for joining me today on this, well, at least in Arizona. It's a beautiful day, although it is hot, but it is a beautiful day. Be sure to like this video, share it out to everyone, leave me a comment, and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and I would really appreciate it. I'm over 700, so more than halfway there. Everything helps. And once again, I want to welcome you to my vidcast where I talk about all things pop culture from movies to television to comic books to anime and beyond. It is so much fun doing this, and especially on a day like today, normally I would be very excited. Why? Because it is Star Wars Day. And that's right, I'm not going to get a lot of evergreen traction out of this one, but <laughs> it is Star Wars Day. And I remember the first time I watched A New Hope. My dad had gone to, I believe it was Circuit City when those were still around. And uh, at the time, it was 20th Century Fox that owned Star Wars, on the rights to Star Wars. And they had released these, uh, this VHX box sets. And it was still the theatrical cut of the original movies, just with enhanced effects. So, like, for instance, you could tell, like... Um, it was very digitally enhanced, kind of pre-HD, and I was blown away by it. It was amazing to me as a kid. We And what was unusual about that particular purchase is my parents um, were smart and limited the amount of time that me and my sister could watch TV and play video games. They wanted us to play outside, so it was special about Star Wars was it was one of my first memories of, hey, dad's breaking a rule. We can watch um, this whole movie and it's not like a holiday or, or a weekend or whatever it was. And I was blown away by A New Hope. It truly was an amazing film to me as a kid, even watching it with all of its um, intricacies I really picked up on what it was about and then of course I watched probably or no I'm not I'm just gonna say it I watched the greatest Star Wars movies of all time which is the Empire Strikes Back and being a kid and being pre social media days <laughs> I didn't know the spoiler which this is a spoiler for those of you who have been living under a rock that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father and I was I was shocked at this at my young kid age. I was like, what? 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 And what's even more hilarious is my dad actually told me that when he had first heard, when he saw the movie in theaters, when he heard Darth Vader say that, at first he thought Darth Vader was lying, that he was just trying to manipulate Luke. And of course, though at the, the end when Darth Vader and Luke kind of have that force connection where they're talking to each other, you know, and through the force at the conclusion of Empire Strikes Back is like, oh, okay, well, he's telling the truth. And then, of course, Return of the Jedi, blown away by it. And I know people kind of say it's it's the weakest of the original trilogy. I guess that could be true to, to some degree, but it's still an amazing film. It's blow, blow me away amazing. Well, in 1999, of course, Star Wars Episode One comes out, and I don't care what anyone says, the prequel trilogy is amazing. The people who don't like it are, you know, it's it's fine. They don't have to like it. And just in my opinion, I think they're wrong. I loved, I didn't get to see The Phantom Menace opening night like I wanted to, I, but it was, we lived in Dallas at the time. All the theaters were, were just packed. There was just no way that was going to happen. But we did get to see it, I think, the following weekend. So after all the crowds had died down, my mom and dad treated me and my sister and took us to see The Phantom Menace. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I will admit, uh, by then I was 11. And even as an 11-year-old, as an I was kind of confused a little bit by the timeline. But of course, you know, George Lucas being the brilliant filmmaker that he is, it all worked out. And then, of course, Attack of the Clones. I actually did get to see opening night. We, My dad, I don't know how he found this place, but he managed to, to scrounge up tickets for opening night for a Thursday showing. Because, you know, back, you know, usually they, with big openers like this, they open Friday nights. Well, he actually found one that, you know, kind of pre-MCU that 
actually opened it Thursday because they wanted to alleviate, alleviate the crowds for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, uh, once again, good for my parents for, <laughs> for managing that. And I loved it. Now, on, oh, again, I know the people complain about it. I don't care. I thought it was fantastic. I loved all the lightsaber duels. I loved the lightsaber duel between Master Yoda and Darth Tyrannus. Fantastic stuff. Um, the it was it was one of the first films where Lucas shot it totally digitally. It used a lot of early CGI, and in my humble opinion, I still think the CGI holds up today. Sure, it looks a little dated compared to what they can do now with modern technology, but I think Lucas was way ahead of his time. And then um, Revenge of the Sith comes out. Once a, now this time. Um, all the theaters, even this one, even the one we went to see for Attack of the Clones, even it was totally packed. I was so desperate to see it opening night that once again, my parents, uh, you know, pulled through in a clutch and they brought us to this dinky theater in a bad part of Arlington at, at some mall and it stank. The floor, the floor crunched when you walked on it. It smelled like not just not just popcorn. Like you know how sometimes you walk into a theater and you're just overwhelmed with the smell of popcorn. This it smelled like stale popcorn. My sister was actually wearing a jacket at the time, and she draped it over her seat. And we watched Revenge of the Sith at this dinky, smelly old theater in somewhere in the town of, or in the city of Arlington. Arlington's not a town, it's a, it's a city. So, <laughs> I, again, don't know how my parents found this place, but or, or maybe they knew about it and I just didn't know about it. You know, parents tend to know things about it. But it was so cool because I didn't, obviously I wasn't born when the original trilogy came out, but my dad was, and he and my and my mom as well, and they had both gone to see it in theaters. So getting to experience that as a kid with my parents and with my sister, it was a really cool thing. Star Wars has a the, the original trilogy and, and the prequels have a way of bringing people together. And what's interesting about it is. You know, I was really sad that other that George Lucas didn't really do anything with Star Wars after the completion of the prequels. I know he did like those weird edits to the movies where he did the extended cuts of the originals. I like some things about those, not other things, but to me it didn't really ruin the experience. And of course Clone Wars came out, the video games, I got into the novels. I've read I read so many of the novels. I own first printings of the original uh, Thrawn trilogy, the Heir to the Empire books. Uh, fantastic stuff. Just just amazing. And one of the um, interesting things was when it was first announced that Disney was purchasing um, Lucasfilm, I actually got excited because one of the things people didn't realize was uh, 20th Century Fox didn't own Lucasfilm. They just had a distribution deal with them, which is why Clone Wars was uh, first introduced on Cartoon Network. Um, but, you know, instead of, say, uh, you know, 20th Century Fox, like on your local Fox network, right? Instead, uh, you know, Cartoon Network, which was owned by Warner Brothers, actually, which is owned by Warner Brothers, excuse me, Warner Brothers Discovery. That's why uh, Clone Wars ended up there. Now, I didn't like the first season of Clone Wars. I didn't really care for the shorts that they did with that weird, you know, animation. It looked like they were trying to Im Im imitate Craig McCracken style, uh, you know, who did Powerpuff Girls. Uh, it looked like they were trying to imitate that. It didn't really work for me. So when they switched it to CGI, I got a little excited. And again, I didn't care for the first season, but after season two, I was hooked. I was like pulled into it thought it was fantastic um, after that going forward watched all of Clone Wars fantastic stuff it is interesting though because the Clone Wars really only takes place over a year but the the show because everything has happened in the Star Wars universe is so vast like you know they they ran it for you know nine seasons right because <laughs> they would just go to a different part of the universe you know whenever whenever they were thinking okay well this is starting to get close to that year mark so we're just going to go to the outer rim we're going to go to the mid rim we're going to go back to coruscant you know 
funny stuff like that. And so when Disney purchased Lucasfilm, I got excited for a while because I was like, oh, Disney. Because at the time, Disney was riding high on a ton of successes. You know, um, Bob Iger for a while was being a good CEO of Disney. You know, uh, you know, I, I thought uh, he brought fresh blood into it. One of the things I didn't really like about him was he kind of – uh, started to tell stories that didn't have villains in them, and that was something that always kind of bothered me about Disney was because uh, or because Disney's their villains are some of the greatest villains in animation and live action. They're really good about making villains, not so much under Bob Iger's watch or Bob Chapek's watch. To be fair, well, I got all excited, and then The Force Awakens came out. And I wasn't really thrilled with it. It was kind of like a remake of A New Hope. Um, and also the ending of it I didn't like. And then, of course, The Last Jedi just deflated me completely. And then The Rise of Skywalker. Now, Rogue One and the first two seasons of The Mandalorian brought back hope. Certainly, Star Wars Visions, the first season, uh, definitely brought back hope. But uh, every time Disney has garnered goodwill with the fans... They immediately find some way to wash it down the toilet. So, you know, this Star Wars Day, I kind of woke up, and I had actually forgotten it was Star Wars Day. I was kind of like, I had to be reminded by by, by one of my friends, Kelly, a Warrior Woman 91. She's a friend of the channel. She's a friend of mine. She's been on the channel. She actually guest hosted it for me uh, one time. And, you know, it's very, um, uh, it's very interesting how something that I used to look forward to every year has kind of become that thing where I'm like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars Day. Uh, uh, you know, for me, the on now the only time I get excited for some of these pop culture days is Batman Day. I am still get excited about Batman stuff. It's Batman is my favorite comic book hero of all. I think he's the best uh, character created from DC Comics, although he wasn't, a, he was in DC Comics before Superman, right? So, uh, you know, but with Star Wars, I've kind of, um, I've kind of gotten to a place where I just don't get excited when they make a new announcement. The only things that I can for sure say I'm excited about are uh, Andor season two and Star Wars Vision season two, which w releases this week as part of Star Wars Day. Don't care about Tales of the Jedi. I don't care about Bad Batch. I I want to care about Ahsoka, but now that I see that they're just inserting her in a story that Luke was actually a part of, you know, with the heir to the Empire stuff, I'm, you know, I'm not really that excited for it. And I love Ahsoka as a character. It's nothing, and it's certainly nothing against Rosario Dawson personally. I think she's a fantastic actress. I loved her in all the Marvel stuff she was in. I love her as Ahsoka. I think she makes a good adult Ahsoka. You know, you can read more about that in my review of the Mandalorian season two, but it just is not, it's just not the way it was the way it used to be whenever I would just get so excited, so excited for what was coming next. And now not so much. I'm starting to, it's now like the MCU has become since, since Spider-Man no way home it feels like now it's kind of a chore to get through. And I'll still watch some of the stuff, still watch some of the content, but from Rise of Skywalker to Obi-Wan to the Book of Boba Fett uh, to, to the Bad Batch, which Bad Batch, it's not a bad show per se, but it's just not as good as Clone Wars, and it's supposed to be a sequel of sorts to the Clone Wars. And none of, obviously, none of the Lego stuff. And... Even with Star Wars Visions, Disney was pitching that as, hey, this is a reach out to anime fans. So we're going to make Star Wars Visions with all of, we're going to cooperate with all these different anime studios. Well, then they, now season two, they've gone beyond that. They've reached out to studios across the world, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But Visions was branded as an anime epic. And so as, a, as someone who loves anime, obviously, and who loves Star Wars, obviously, I got, I got excited about that. But then now with the second season of Visions, bringing in other studios who don't you know, work in anime 
it just doesn't make sense to me as a fan of both those because now I'm kind of like now I'm going to watch it and I'm looking forward to it I'm not saying these animation studios are bad I'm just saying that they should have gone with a different branding should have put them under Tales of the Jedi for instance as um you know as a part of that because visions they build it so much as an anime and then it's like oh by the way it's not an anime anymore now you're just kind of like huh so all that to say um, one thing I'm going to do tonight, though, is I'm going to go back and look over my old Star Wars things, and I'm going to reflect, because the first six movies, Rogue One, the um, early the, or the Clone Wars, the novels, the video games, they all have a really important connection to me, and they were part of my development as a teenager. It's something that I enjoy as an adult. And I'm going to go back over those old things. I'm not going to re- let... I know there's this temptation with us pop culture YouTubers to let the new things hurt the old things. And I'm just not going to let that happen. I did happen a little bit to me early this morning where I was like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars Day. Well, I'm just going to say, you know what? No, I'm going to enjoy my Star Wars Day. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to remember what was good and appreciate it. And I'm going to dive right back into the Force. So all that said, may the fourth be with you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, that you'll leave me a comment, tell me what you think, that you'll share it out with your friends, and of course, consider subscribing to Studio Jake. I cover all kinds of nerd and pop culture topics, including film, television, anime, comic books, and so much more. I hope that you'll also head over to my main website, studiojakemedia.com, where I have even more news, views, and commentary. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, head over to my Locals page. That's studiojakemedia.locals.com. It's the best way to support me. I'm trying to build a little community there. I have exclusive reviews and articles, so definitely head over there and check it out. And I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.